This is a lakefront shipping container cabin that I built. I'm gonna take you through it and give you enough detail to help you if you're building one and uh, withhold enough detail to try not to bore you if you're not. I had the empty box delivered to a spot by my house where I could work on it. And my first decision was whether to paint it or to put in the windows and doors before painting it. I decided to paint it first and for reasons I'll talk about later, I think that was the wrong move. When I was looking for a box, I was looking for something that wasn't all dinged up, but I didn't pay much attention to the stickers that are on it. And that was a mistake. These stickers are a real pain to get off. I've seen a bunch of people just hit them with an angle grinder like I'm doing here. That doesn't work very well. It leaves really big grooves and it's something I didn't realize until too late. I figured with enough primer and paint, you wouldn't be able to see these, but they're real noticeable even after my paint job if you look closely. To get it ready to paint, I gave it a power wash and then put an elastomeric coating on the roof. This both keeps it cool and helps prevent water penetration. This is really a must do. My last container didn't have any coating on the roof and it leaked like crazy. From there, I painted the four external walls with a paint sprayer. These container builds have gotten super popular, but I think the original ethos was to take a shipping container, which there were plenty of, and many of which weren't being used, and to turn it into something livable. We've gotten away from that with some really fancy builds using containers, and that's fine, but I decided early on that I wanted this project to have as much recycled, upcycled, whatever word you want to use, material as possible. So I start with a used container rather than a new one. And then I decided to use all salvage doors and windows. So I went to my local salvage place and spent 300 bucks for the doors and the windows. And this of course requires a bunch of extra work. You gotta patch up holes in the doors and sand them and paint them and build frames and all that. It's a ton of extra work. The cost savings are significant for the doors. A set of double doors at Home Depot run you about a thousand bucks. And I've got about a hundred bucks into these two doors from the salvage place. And maybe another 50 in materials for the frame. The issue of how to handle doors and windows in a container is one that gets a lot of attention. After a good bit of research, I decided really the best way to do it is to weld the frame together for each door and each window. This can be done with angle iron, which I'm using here, or square tubing. This is two inch by two inch by one eighth inch angle iron, and the eighth inch is nice because the container, which I'll weld the frame to, is also an eighth of an inch. Makes welding easier if the two pieces of metal are the same size. I'll put out a video that shows just how to make a shipping container window frame out of angle iron. But note that I think the angle iron is easier than square tubing because the hole that you cut in the container can be a little bit less precise with angle iron. Here's what I mean by that. So here's a hole that I cut for a window in the container. And with angle iron, because it's got two inches on each piece of the angle, you can be a little bit off on the hole. So I've got some room to play with here. By this point, I was getting good enough to cut the hole the right size. But when I started, I wasn't cutting perfect holes for these windows, and so it was nice to have the wiggle room. With square tubing, you'll weld a square right inside the hole that you cut, and so it's kinda gotta be perfect. The door frame's just slightly different than the windows because you don't put a piece of angle iron on the bottom of the frame. Most people just use a two by four, another piece of metal. You can see I'm using a two by four here to hold it tight and steady. Once the frames are done, it's time to cut holes in the container for the doors and windows. And this is the classic approach right here. Take a piece of flexible cardboard and it helps you draw straight lines over the corrugations. Running vertical, there are no corrugations and so it's easier to draw the lines. I wasn't sure whether to cut the holes from inside or out. The problem with cutting them inside is that it's deafeningly loud, solved by ear protection as you can see here. And if you're cutting up, like I was doing there, sparks are landing on your head. The nice thing about cutting from the inside is that you know where you are relative to the floor for purposes of making measurements. That's not a huge problem outside, but it's just slightly easier on the inside. And it's easier to see your pencil marks on the inside as well. As far as the proper tool to use, I use mostly an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. And here I'm trying a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. That's not bad but I preferred the angle grinder and I got pretty decent with it. The problem with the jigsaw is going over the corrugations. That's pretty rough. Standard fare in a shipping container build is to show the paneling falling out after a cut, so I won't deprive you. I'll give you three shots of the doors and windows falling out. That one wasn't very dramatic. Here I'm installing the big window frame. 
By the way, the salvage windows weren't really a great deal. They were 50 or 60 bucks a piece. Same size window at Home Depot, 160. And so there's not a big cost savings there. The metal frames are then welded into the shipping container, welded to the shipping container. And you don't need to run a continuous weld, just enough to hold the window securely in place. I'm working off grid, and so I'm using a cheap little Harbor Freight welder, which I can run off a generator. Here's the second of your window fallout shots. So I have the camera on the ground here. I don't know how this panel didn't hit it. Although I did get a broken camera out of this project. Working in these 20 foot containers with a bunch of equipment is a very tight space with a bunch of things that are happy to knock over a tripod. Here's the big double door weld. And one thing to note here is you can see the welds are burning right through the paint on the other side. That's one reason to maybe wait to paint it until you finish installing the doors and windows. There are a couple pieces of this project that are really nice to have two people for. Obviously a huge set of double doors was something I really had to fight with every now and then. I was on the losing side of that fight. One note before you haul off and start cutting window holes or door holes in a container, you want to try to position the window or door frame so that it's on even parts of the corrugation on either side. It's kind of hard to explain with what I've got here. But if you have a 40 inch window, you want it to fall on the down slope, up slope, back slope, front slope of the corrugation on each side so that your window frame isn't crooked. I mentioned that my first cuts with the angle grinder were pretty bad. I was a bit cocky and thought I could draw a straight line over the corrugations without that cardboard trick. That wasn't true. So to fix that, Here's what you do, you take a piece of treated lumber and basically trace the corrugations onto it. And then you can use the thickness of the wood to seal that gap where you have the bad cuts. So I've taken a jigsaw and cut out equivalent corrugation grooves. I can just stick that up in there. The problem with that is once you've done it for a window, if you want them all to match, you've pretty much got to do it for all the windows. That's quite a bit of work. I like the look of it, so I didn't mind doing the work. It's got a nice little reveal to it. Of course, one thing I wasn't thinking about is when I stuck these frames around the door, it prevents the double doors from fully opening. Lastly, I just sealed everything with a good bead of polyurethane sealant. The matter of framing a shipping container gets a lot of attention. No one's going to accuse me of overthinking this job. The framing is less important than a traditional stick build because you've already got the structural support in the container. So what's the point of the framing? To hold insulation and to hold your interior paneling. The big decision on framing is are you going to take your 2x4s and turn them sideways so that you have more interior space? I did, and I think it was a bad idea. You'll note that I'm using 2x3s, cheaper than 2x4s, and it doesn't matter if you turn them sideways. But I do have some 2x4s and 2x6s, as you can see on the left here, that are all salvage materials. If you turn the 2x sideways, you pick up a grand total of 4 inches of interior space. The 2x4 is 3.5 inches by 1.5 inches, and so that's a 2 inch pickup for each wall. So a total of four inches. It's tight in a 20 foot container, but it ain't that tight because the downside of turning the board sideways is that you lose a lot of valuable real estate for insulation. More on that later. And to run vent pipes and conduit, etc. A vent pipe's about an inch and a half, and so if your frame is only an inch and a half, you cut right through the frame to run a pipe. So on this build, I'm going to run everything on the interior wall, nothing through the 2x4s. This cabin only has one little room in it, which is a small little bathroom that I'm framing out here. Onto the insulation component. You notice I'm feeding spray foam insulation down into the gaps. And then all I've got space for here is one inch, really one and a half inch insulation, but I can only find one inch foam insulation. Although I was able to supplement the insulation a little bit by feeding small strips into the outer part of the corrugation and the panels and then putting insulation over on top. But one inch insulation does not have a strong R value. 
And so by turning the board sideways as I did in the framing, I lost the ability to use a typical three and a half inch insulation, which would have made this container a whole lot better insulated. The part I was really looking forward to was the puzzle of the interior siding. Keeping up with the salvage aspect of this project, I'm using all reclaimed salvage, whatever you want to call it, barn wood. And if you go back a few videos, you'll find the barn teardown project that Johnny and I did. So I've taken all this wood that we collected, and it is not easy to salvage wood, just dealing with the nails and the broken wood and everything. The fun part though is to take all this wood with its different patinas and thickness and figure out the puzzle of making it fit in the container. So I started by just framing out the windows and then worked from there. I had a ton of fun taking pieces and making little built-in shelves or mantles, little odd areas within the container. That is until I realized how long it takes to work with salvage siding and got to a point where it was just like, I gotta get this project done. Right here, I'm still in that fun stage, making little notched out things where someone can walk in and look at that and go, why does that exist? As I worked, I was constantly thinking, where do things go in this container and where can I hide wood that I'm not that big of a fan of? This is some plain wood here. And I'm gonna stick the bed in this corner. That's at least the current plan. So I'm using this plain wood and hiding it with the bed frame. My favorite pieces are these dark grays and yellow, old barn wood with the tin can bottoms patching holes, and those go in the spots where you can see them when you walk in. We also tore a lot of wood out of an old house that was next to the barn. These are all window siding panels and baseboards and things like that, and I had a lot of fun hacking these up and siding out the, the bathroom, both inside and outside. These looked a little bit rough and dirty, so I ended up painting them white. At this point with the wood, I had so many patinas and sizes and colors and everything going that I was thinking maybe I'll just stain it all the same color or paint it white. But my wife came through and said she liked the way that it looked as is, and so I'll let you be the judge when I show you the final shots. It takes so much salvage wood to do a project, and even with a full U-Haul of salvage wood, I didn't have enough to do the ceiling. So I enlisted my old man, shown here making his first YouTube appearance, <laughs> to help me grab some salvage fence panels and break them down. <laughs> Once I finished the ceiling, it was a good logical stopping point since people were starting to break into my container and steal stuff and break windows. And so I called an outfit to come grab this container and take it out to the lake for me. I picked up a few shots on the game camera I had installed to try to catch those thieves. Once the container got to the lake, it was put on a barge and sent across. One of the fun things about this building site is that you cannot drive to it. Everything has to go across by boat. So this container returned to its home on the high seas, albeit very briefly, before making its way over to my property. My bargeman threw it up on some blocks and I played around with getting it leveled a little bit more. Remember, no more than one hand underneath the container at any time. That way, if the jack fails, you could still reach your cell phone to call someone. So the container's in place out at the lake, which you can see in the reflection in the glass here. Still quite a bit of work to do. I've got to plumb it, do electricity, paint the floor, get everything configured on the inside. Right now, I've just got a couch and a bed in there, so I can stay in there and see how I ultimately want to set it up. That couch, by the way, is a story in and of itself. I found that sitting on the side of the road and jammed it into a trailer. And getting it out to the lake and across was quite a project. Being a sleeper sofa, it was no easy task. So here's a look around. As I mentioned, I've got those built-in mantles, places to put things and little pockets and unusual shelves built in and things like that. The gray and Yellow wood is my favorite, so I try to put that in a place where it will be highlighted. I really love this long back window. It's about eight feet long. And then again, the mantle where I can put little oddities and candles and things. And here's the toilet room, which still needs to be completed.
In addition to finishing out the cabin, you can see I'm setting up to build a deck out in front of it. And I'm planning on building a second story cabin on top of the container, as well as a deck on part of the top of the container. There's the view looking out, and here's the view from the top. Nice little view once I clean up some of those mesquite branches. And here's a shot of the property with the camper from an earlier video. Let's finish with a cost breakdown. The container was 3,500 bucks, which is absolutely ridiculous historically. A few years ago, I bought a 45 foot container, more than twice as big for like 18 or $1,900. And everything on this list is historically high prices. This is March, 2022 and things cost a ton right now. I mentioned all doors and windows are salvaged, 300 bucks, that saved a lot of money. Steel window frames and treated wood window frames were 450 together. I used about half salvaged lumber and half new lumber, two by threes. So double the cost of lumber if you're buying all new uh, framing material. Insulation was 400 bucks. Uh, paint and primer, 300. Miscellaneous screws, cut off discs, etc., $500. And an air conditioning unit was 200. So the total cost without the container was 2550. And again, that would be a lot higher if you're not using salvage materials because obviously missing from this list is interior siding, which can be pretty expensive. Total cost with the container, 6,050. And note that this list does not include delivery services to my initial property from my property to the lake or the barge services across. But anyway, I enjoyed that process so much. I've already bought another container that a meth had lit on fire. And that thing was obviously a lot cheaper, but it will pose its own building challenges. And it's already across the lake, waiting for me to start working on it on a different lot. If you enjoyed this and want to see that project or see the upper level on the first container, won't me a subscribe and we'll see you down the road.